much for being here today and uh, to, to answer our, uh, our request for a press conference. We are a group of MAPS, a small group of MAPS right now. Many, of our, many others are uh, were not here today due to the, uh, the circumstances that we're facing right now. Uh, many of us are joining online. Others, other of us are supporting us, uh, you know, from, from their homes. And uh, the reason why we wanted to call this press conference today is to raise serious concerns about the fact, about the discussion that is currently going on in the Parliament, that us as MEPS, our staff members, and the staff that is working for the Parliament will not be able to enter, apparently soon, the premises unless they have a green certificate. And uh, this, is, this is raising a lot of concerns to many of us as MEPS, to many of our staff members, and to many of the workers that are working for the European Parliament. So uh, I'm here today with my colleagues. On my left is uh, our colleague, uh, Christine Anderson from Germany. Uh, further to the left, our colleague, you know, Francesca Donato from Italy. And to my right, my colleague, my colleague Ivan Sincic uh, from Croatia. We are from different political groups. Uh, we have other members uh, from the left to the right, spectrum of the political groups that are all concerned about this problem, about this issue, that the basic fundamental rights of us, of our assistance, I say, of the staff members, and nevertheless of the European citizens, are deeply under threat right now. And uh, before I go any further, I would say what, uh, what I personally have to say, I want to, I want to introduce uh, my colleague, Kristen Anderson. I know she, has, uh, she had different positions, tough positions, on this issue, and I would like uh, her to uh, express that. Thank you. Yeah, vielen Dank. Um, yeah, also the Thank you very much. The main problem, in my view, in connection with this COVID crisis, is that civic rights are being increasingly curtailed, and it's not clear why citizens would go along with this. One of the reasons might be, and this is one of the disadvantage of free democratic societies, that you always reach a point at which you believe that democracy and the rule of law and freedom are somehow God-given, that they've always been there and that they will survive. Whereas in actual fact, these are rights that have to be battled for, and that is why we have to do more to fight for this right to freedom, and that is why these fundamental principles which are anchored in the basic law in the Constitution in Germany should not be viewed as privileges which are given by the government and can then be withdrawn. And I am unequivocal about the fact that I am not fearful of COVID at all. What I am worried about are the kinds of governments which exploit this crisis in order to curb civic freedoms and to grant certain privileges or not, as the case may be. What we stand for in Europe is freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. And there can be no reason for those rights being curtailed by governments. That is the real problem here. That is a problem we need to deal with. Make it clear to the people of Europe that they should not tolerate this for a moment longer. Thank you. Francesca. Thank you very much to you all. It's very important for me to be here today. I think that uh, um, all that uh, my colleague uh, Christine has said is really important. Um, we have a, a really terrible situation in Europe today because, uh, as she said, uh, uh, human rights are not respected. We have the uh, European Chart of Human Rights, which has the full value of a treaty and should be um, taken into account by all national governments while uh, writing their laws. But in fact, it's uh, obliterated today. 
because fundamental human rights, such as uh, um, human right to individual freedom, to employment, equality, education, health, free expression of thought, are seriously violated. And all over Europe, uh, peaceful protests are violently repressed. So uh, we had uh, uh, in Europe, uh, uh, the European Union and the European Parliament introduced uh, a COVID certificate just to facilitate movement between member states and uh, with the purpose to avoid any discrimination against not vaccinated people. But whereas the Italian government and other national government in uh, Europe uh, um, has introduced, have introduced a, a compulsory COVID certificate for every social activity, such as entering uh, public uh, premises uh, or traveling inside the countries, uh, or for, in Italy, just uh, also employment, uh, um, university education, and so on. They just make a big discrimination between uh, uh, vaccinated people and unvaccinated because uh, we have the introduction of an absolute presumption of infectivity for non-vaccinated people and of non-infectivity for, for vaccinated people that are both scientifically unfounded. And so we are forcing citizens to receive invasive and risky health treatment because uh, the uh, informed consent that citizens are obliged to sign to receive the vaccines is not free. It's, it's a, a constraint concern, uh, consent. So uh, even when people have uh, medical contraindications for receiving vaccines, they are obliged to do that. They are forced to do it because they would lose the job would lose their fundamental rights if they don't. And when these people have adverse effects, even very severe adverse effects, they don't receive any free assistance. Even the reports of adverse effects are very rare. So the data, the data of adverse effects that we can read on papers are just underestimated. So we, we have a, a, a medical issue who has, uh, which has turned into a democratic issue. We, we must today, I think, uh, all stand for the defense of human rights uh, in Europe. And we must do it all together and we must do it now. We can't wait any longer because a lot of people are suffering, are losing their jobs, a lot of families are losing their li uh, right to have uh, uh, money to live. And uh, this involves not only national citizens, such as Italians or French people, but also foreign ones who work and live in other countries in the European Union, where the rights of establishment for workers and the right of circulation is one of the founding rights of the European unity and the European Union. So I, I ask, I call for stopping violently repressing uh, demonstrators, just listening to uh, demands from people and Let's give back to people their right to live a full life with all the human rights without any more distinguish, distinction between vaccinated and unvaccinated people. Let's treat everybody as human beings, as our uh, chart of human rights uh, obliges us to do. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca.